Hello guys and welcome to another video from a little bush. Let's take a new question. A 14 years old asthmatic patient comes to the GP after having another attack where he find himself unable to breathe. The patient was prescribed albuterol inhalers at the first visit but his condition didn't improve. Now the GP wants to add inhaled corticosteroids to the treatment plan. The inhaled corticosteroids most likely affects which of the steps shown in the diagram below. Clearly from this question we can see that it's discussing the diagram seen on the right side. What is known as arachidonic acid pathway. Thus throughout this video we will explain the arachidonic acid pathway. We will know we will name the different drugs affecting this pathway, its metabolite, which are known as equizanoids. Lastly, we will wrap up by discussing the options and the answer of this question. So let's get started. So arachidonic acid is an essential pathway that happens in virtually all tissues. It controls essential body functions, for example, blood hemodynamics, gastric protections, renal blood flow, and it has an important role in inflammation, pain sensation, and fever. For this pathway, it all starts in cell membrane, specifically the phospholipid part, part of the cell membrane. In our body, whenever there is tissue injury, for example, it will activate the enzyme phospholipase A2. And as apparent from its name, phospholipase, this enzyme will cleave phospholipid membrane to give us arachidonic acid. Now, arachidonic acid can undergo two major pathways. The cyclooxygenase pathway, as seen on the right side of this diagram, and the lipoxygenase pathway, seen on the left side of this diagram. In the cyclooxygenase pathway, we have two important enzymes, COX-1 and COX-2. COX-1, which is the constitutive enzyme responsible for the physiological production of eicosanoids. COX-2, which is the inductive enzyme responsible for the pathological production of eicosanoids. Then, after going through these enzymes, we will have cyclic endoperoxidase which after many steps will ultimately produce prostacyclin aka prostaglandin i2 prostaglandins e1 e2 f alpha 2 and thromboxin a2 on the other hand the 5 liboxygenase enzyme will produce 5 h p e t e which will also produce different leukotrienes, like for example, leukotriene B4, C4, D4, and E4. Now, there is much, much more in the steps and the metabolites, but these are the one which, will, which has been well studied and they are important clinically. Now there are many things which can alter this pathway. Let's talk about them one by one. First, we have certain stimuli which can act on the enzyme phospholipase A2. If we are taking tissue injury as an example, it will stimulate phospholipase A2 and we will have the end metabolite of inflammation and pain sensation. Next, there is the group of drugs called corticosteroids. Now corticosteroids is the most powerful anti-inflammatory drug. It acts by inhibiting phospholipase A2, thus inhibiting the subsequent events of this pathway. If we are moving on to the cyclooxygenase part, there are COX-1 and COX-2 inhibitor NSAIDs the non steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Now, aspirin irreversibly inhibit COX-1 and COX-2. Other NSAIDs like diclofenac and ibuprofen, they 
reversibly inhibit both COX-1 and COX-2. But these drugs have many side effects because they are inhibiting COX-1, which is in the physiological enzyme, and COX-2. So scientists have made a new drug called siloxacep, which selectively inhibit the pathological COX, COX-2. On the liboxygenase R, we have leukotriene inhibitors, which will be the topic of our next video. Now let's switch gears and talk about eicosanoids. We have selected the six most important eicosanoids and we will compare the different features that they produce. In the beginning, I want you to think about them as good or bad. As you can see in the slide, there are three prostaglandins in the green color, prostaglandin E1, E2, and I2. And there are three eicosanoids on the red with the red color, prostaglandin F2 alpha, thromboxin A2, and leukotrienes. In regards to their effect on blood vessels, the good ones, they will have vasodilation, but it is physiological vasodilation for some tissue. Prostaglandin F2 alpha and thromboxin A2, they will have vasoconstriction. They are the bad ones. For leukotrienes, they will have vasodilation, but it is inflammatory vasodilation. Now for edema formation, the good ones, they may, might have a slight reduction of edema because of the vasodilation, so the capillary permeability will increase a little bit. But it is, this is not an inflammatory one. For prostaglandin F2 alpha and thromboxin A2, they will have no edema formation because there is vasoconstriction. For leukotrienes, they will have severe edema formation. This is a swelling seer in, seen in inflammation. For their effect on bronchus, the good ones, they will produce bronchodilation, so we will have more air, more oxygen. For the bad ones, they will cause bronchoconstriction. And especially for leukotrienes, it is very severe bronchoconstriction. For their effect on uterus, the good ones for non-pregnant lady, they will have uterine relaxation. For a pregnant lady, they will have uterine contraction. But uh, uterine contraction in a pregnant lady, aren't they the good ones? Yes, uterine contraction will happen near term. So they will help in the process of labor. For the bad ones, they will have uterine contraction. And uh, these prostaglandins sometimes can act as abortive agents. For their effect on renal blood flow, the good ones, they will have increased renal blood flow. The bad ones, prostaglandin F2 alpha, thromboxin A2, they will have decreased renal blood flow. And for leukotrienes, the effect of on renal blood flow is not yet well understood. For the extra effects, prostaglandin E1 and E2, they have this characteristic effect of that they can ab they are able to prevent the closure of ductus arteriosus. They also play a, play a role in mucus production in gastric wall. For prostacyclin, they inhibit platelet aggregation, making the blood move easily. We can remember that that BGI2 inhibit I for I. Prostaglandin F2 alpha, it can induce a portion. It is the most powerful eicosanoids that can do that. Thromboxin A2, they stimulate platelet aggregation, forming a thrombus. And for leukotrienes, especially leukotriene B4, it can act as a chemotaxis. Now going back to the question, in this patient, the general practitioner have going to the next step 
of asthma treatment, which is giving inhaled corticosteroids. Now, as we can see in the diagram, and as we discussed, inhaled corticosteroids acts on phospholipase A2, which the answer will be A, moving on from phospholipase lipids, phospholipids to arachidonic acid. Now, for B and D, these are leukotriene inhibitor, and C, this is for NSAIDs. So this is the end of the lecture. I want to thank you for watching and see you with another video.